Hello everyone and welcome back to another video in the Spring Boot with Angular tutorial series. In this video we are going to just continue on the exactly same spot where we stopped the last time. As you may remember, we, in the last time we created our API, we created our services and basically all that we need now are the, uh, the endpoints which we can call to trigger all of the logic that we have implemented. So like for example creating a vehicle, fetching it, deleting it and all that nice stuff. One thing that we want to do before we start is we want to go to the backend module, uh, to the configuration folder, so to configuration package where we have our application configuration and we want to change this annotation. So from this repository base class, uh, which we had, we want to change it to our package name. For you, this might be a bit different, but you can already see it here. So whatever package you have, just copy that, paste it here and the folder in which our repository is. So our application had some problems uh, starting up and this should solve that. Great. Once you have done that, you want to go to your controller package. In the control package, I already implemented that to save us a bit time. So I created an abstract cradle controller class and the vehicle controller class. If we open the abstract controller class, you will see that it's a uh, a normal Java class with some endpoints defined. So let's take a look at them and see what we have here. First thing that you might notice is that we have our API, so the abstract Cradle API. Keep in mind that this controller is a generic one and the vehicle controller is going to be the implementation of this. So if we take a look at what we have here in the, in the constructor, we are just injecting the API, which takes in the entity and the DTO, same as we had before. And we have a post mapping, for the save method. And we also have a get mapping for the fetching by the ID, where we take in the ID as a parameter. And so at the path, we have an ID and we call the API method to get it by the ID. Same for the list, except we don't have any uh, parameters there. And the delete is same as the fetching, except it's a delete mapping. So it's a delete HTTP request. Great, so it's quite simple and uh, these are the generic methods that we are going to be using for all of the controllers that we have. So uh, it's nice to have them like that so that we don't have to copy them over. So it's basically the same thing that we do, did with our services and API and yeah. So let's take a look at the vehicle controller. So the vehicle controller is extending the abstract cradle controller, the one that we just take, took a look and the types are the vehicle and the vehicle DTO. And in the constructor, we are just injecting the API. So the vehicle API to be created in the previous video. One additional thing that we have here is we are annotating it with the rest controller to tell the spring that this is a rest controller. And of course we are defining the endpoint, which is uh, in our case, slash API slash vehicles. This can be anything. So it doesn't have to be like that, but since we are working with vehicles and we have a vehicle controller, we are naming it vehicles. And for example, you can think of um, the way you would fetch the vehicle by its ID. It would be, uh, for example, localhost 8080 slash API slash vehicles slash the vehicle ID, which would be like one, two, three, four, five, doesn't matter. I already have my application running. So if you go to Postman, uh, Postman is really useful tool that can help you trigger some um, HTTP requests. And uh, you can use any REST client, it doesn't really matter, but I'm just going with Postman. I'll be pasting the download link in the description. It's quite simple to use. You just uh, click here, create a new request, and that's it. I've already created some. For example, I have a post request on the localhost 8080 slash API slash vehicles. And inside of the body, I have this JSON. So here I've clicked on the row. And in the dropdown, I've selected JSON. And if I click send, this will actually create. So let's uh, take a look. If I change it to 22, click send. You can see this is the response that we have, that the vehicle with an ID 5 has been created at this timestamp. And this is our modified times that we are setting with the number. So if we go to the workbench, and select all of the rows from the database. You can see that we already have some vehicles, but we also have the one that we just created, uh, which matches. The, the number is just some string. It doesn't really matter what we set here. So for example, we can also use uh, this endpoint. Uh, if we go to ID five, send it, and you can see that we are fetching it. So all of these endpoints are 
uh, defined here. So that this is, would be the post mapping. So it takes the default endpoint, which for the vehicles, it's API vehicles. And when fetching by the ID, it's API vehicles ID. So the, exactly the same thing that we just executed here. And for example, we also have a list endpoint where we can list all of our uh, vehicles. So you can see that it returns an array with some elements and uh, all of the elements are present there. And we have a delete vehicle endpoint where we select the delete mapping. So you can, here you can set, set the, the method. And if we send this, you can see we have true, which means that if we try to fetch a vehicle by the ID one, it should not work because we don't have it. And if we take, take a vehicle by ID two, we have it. And in our list, we previously had one, two, three, four, five. If we now send it, we should just have two, three, four, five. And if we try to send this again, we get false because this is already deleted and we can't delete it. And actually we should even be able to see it. Yeah, fi uh, fail to find the uh, entity with ID one. This was one of the log messages and fail to delete entity with ID one as it does not exist. So all of our things that we have implemented work. Perfect. So once you have this, um, your application is basically ready to connect with the front end. So all of the things that you want to do with the front end are yeah, done. You don't need to do anything else. Uh, but one thing that we should probably do is create some unit tests. So create some, for example, integration tests. That would be even better. Um, that would help us to make sure that our logic stays working as we do some modifications in the future. So all the things that we have been doing here, we want to do that with an integration test to verify that the vehicle service is working. To do that, I have extended our test package and I have created uh, inside of the Java uh, folder, I have created a um, package called com lilium uh, spring angular. So you can name it whatever you want and it should just match this one here. And I have created a vehicle service integration test, which is for now just empty. You can see that we have this at Spring Boot test annotation, which at least, um, tells Spring that this is a yeah, Spring Boot test. And also I have created this resources folder and inside of the resources folder, I have this. This means that we are going to be using the H2 database, which is a kind of an in-memory database used for uh, our unit tests, so for our integration tests. If we would not have this, uh, we would have been using our real database, which would mean that if you execute the unit test, uh, it would uh, create it here. That might sound nice, but it's not really, because if you would execute this somewhere else, like for example, on, uh, on GitLab or something like that in the pipeline, you would need to have a connection to the real database and you don't really want that because that's just a test. You want to be able to run your test as many times as you want. So uh, for that, we are just going to use in-memory database, which is cleared after the test has been finished. So keep in mind for this structure. So we create this resources package and inside of it, create the application.properties file with these settings. The password and the username are uh, whatever you want. So it doesn't matter what you enter here. Also, in addition, you also have to uh, add a dependency. Uh, you have to have this test implementation with the H2 database so that we have um, access to it. So this is inside of the backend module, our build cradle file. And also add this uh, test use JUnit platform so that we are able to run our tests. And that would be all of the changes that I had done uh, without you. We can actually inspect them here just to make sure that we didn't miss anything. So this would be our controller, which we changed. This would be the application properties uh, for our tests. And this would be the change in the configuration. And this would be the change in the build gradle file in the modules backend. And this would be the vehicle controller. And very end is the vehicle service integration test. Okay, let's go back to our um, test and yeah, let's create a test basically. So what do we want to test here is our cradle functionality. We are testing the vehicle service, so we need to inject it here. So we are auto-wiring the vehicle service, and now we want to create a test method. So we are uh, creating a vehicle cradle test here. So how would we do that? 
the thing that we want to create that we want to test first is creation of the vehicle we want to make sure that the vehicle can be created so to create a vehicle our front end would be sending a dto with some properties uh, in our case it would be just the vehicle number and we would expect that it the vehicle gets created so let's see if that works so we have our uh, vehicle dto here uh, we can make it final and we are setting the number and now in our service all that we have to do is call the save method with this DTO that we have created. With the save method we know that it returns um, a DTO after it has been saved. So saved DTO or saved vehicle. We can make this also final. And now what we want to do is we want to make some assertions. For example, we want to assert that this is uh, not null, that it has an ID, that it has created a modified timestamps and that the number matches this one. So let's make sure that this works. We are going to be using the assert uh, J uh, library to do the, our assertions. So we assert, assert that saved vehicle is not null. So this is one of the first assertions that we want to do. Uh, let's add an import for this so that we uh, can shorten it a bit. And let me add the rest of the assertions and then we will run our test. So here it is. What we are testing here is we are testing if the saved vehicle is not null if the ID is not null, if the created and modified timestamps are not null, and we are also testing if the number is equal to the, the number that we have sent from our front end. So in our case, that we just set here in the DTO. You could of course uh, verify that the number is not null, but if it equals to this one, then that automatically means it's not null. To test our, uh, so to run our test, we can just use this um, play button here or however this is called to run it. And if you have multiple tests, you can execute them by here but since we only have one we can just run it and the, the 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 window here will open and you should be able to see the results of your test so let's see how it goes uh, it might take some time for them to, to get started but we should eventually see them and you can see that the test results are in and everything's green so you can see that uh yeah, the, the execution finished and the test has been run and it's green. If we want to make sure that it fails, for example, that our tests are not uh, always passing, we can break it by saying is null. So this modified timestamp should be set, so it should not be null. So if we run this test, it should fail now. And as you can see, we got our test results and it tells us that it has been expecting something to be equal to null, but it was not and it tells us um, where that has been so if you click this it immediately jumps to this uh, line of code and tells you what's wrong so our test works everything is fine we are able to create the vehicle now we want to test if we can fetch it by the id we do that by calling the get by id method and here it is we have fetched our vehicle by the id Let's get rid of this empty line. And now we basically want to verify that this vehicle by ID is not null and that it equals the saved vehicle because these DTOs should be exactly the same. So let's do that. Uh, I will implement it and then I will explain what we are doing. So here it is, we are extracting from the vehicle by ID, these two properties, so the ID and the number, and we are verifying that uh, this object here contains these values. So from the saved vehicles, we are saved vehicle, we are taking the ID and the number and we are verifying that they are contained. We can even make sure that it's contained in exactly the same order. So um, actually it contains is enough. We don't need to verify the order as it does not matter. If we run our test again, it should again pass. Perfect, our test has passed. We move on to the next method, which is the list method. 
So we have fetched all of our vehicles. Uh, we just want to verify that this is not null and that there is an element contained. So we are verifying that the vehicles is not null and that it has one element. So basically the vehicle that we have created here. Perfect. Let's also verify that we are able to update our vehicle. So to do that, we can uh, take the saved vehicle detail. We can modify it here. So if we do um, save vehicle set number and we called service save. So now since we have the ID, our service should actually update this vehicle and we can uh, verify this. And also we can verify that uh, timestamp, uh, modify timestamp is now greater than on the saved vehicle because the saved vehicle was updated uh, at this point but now the modified timestamp should be greater so we are verifying that the updated vehicle modified timestamp is after saved vehicle modified timestamp so let's run our tests again and everything should pass perfect our tests are green and everything works the only thing that's left to test is the deletion. We should make sure that if we try to delete the vehicle by the ID, that it uh, is deleted. So here it is. We are going calling the service delete method and the boolean that we return, we are verifying that it is true and that the vehicle is deleted. Also, we can uh, do another assertion where we verify that if we try to fetch it by the ID, that we now get null. And maybe we can also try to delete some vehicle that does not exist. So here it is. We have trying to delete the vehicle with some ID does not, that does not exist and we are expecting it to be false. So let's run our tests again and see what we get. All of our tests are green, everything is nice and exactly how we expect it. We now have our tests that we can run at any moment to verify that our code still works after we have done some changes. And this is a super nice practice that we are going to be doing in this tutorial. So we are going to extend these uh, tests and yeah make sure that everything works you can of course uh, move some of these things in a separate test for example you could have a test separate test for creation for modifying for fetching and deletion and everything uh, like that so that's really up to you however you want to make it uh, work it's totally fine by me so that would be everything for this video and uh, in the next one we are just going to continue to build upon our application so hopefully if you like this, uh, subscribe to my channel and uh, like the videos and I will see you in the next one.